Hello, my name is Nates and today we will do a full Simarine system overview. Today we will showcase our Pico Monitor, a complete battery monitoring solution with the capability of also monitoring air pressure, tank levels, temperatures and user voltage sensors. For that you need extension modules. So first think about your projects and which extension modules you, you need. You can go as little as you need and add additional modules later in the future. Before choosing the modules, you first must know what kind of inputs each module allows. The inputs that our system offers are as follows. Resistance, which are used for tank levels and temperature sensors. Voltage inputs, that are used for tank levels of voltage type, custom user sensors and voltage inputs for battery monitoring. And then current, which offers complete battery monitoring, which has to be accompanied by a voltage reading from a voltage input. So first, let's look at how we monitor batteries. Please keep in mind that when we are talking about battery monitoring, it is not important if we are talking about a single battery or a battery bank, because our monitor will always consider them as a single battery. You can monitor batteries in two ways, voltage-only monitoring and full battery monitoring that takes into account also current. Let's first talk about voltage-only. Voltage-only gives you the state of charge based on voltage only of the battery. This type of battery monitoring is suitable for engine batteries or for thruster batteries, but not so much for service batteries, as whenever a device as a generator or a consumer is connected to the system, it would cause a voltage raise or drop, which would affect the calculation of the state of charge. This type of monitoring is also not suitable for lithium batteries because of the nature of lithium batteries. To monitor a battery with voltage only, you only need a voltage input to our system. In the case of full battery monitoring, you get the maximum precision of battery's state of charge as it takes into account also the current going into the battery and out of the battery. In this case, voltage readings take the second position in calculations of battery state of charge. This type of battery monitoring is also suitable for lithium batteries, as this is much more precise. Let's move on to tank level monitoring. We support any tank level sensors that are either resistance or voltage type. The ranges we support are quite wide, so we support almost every sensor on the market. Our ST107 module supports exactly that, so if you want to know more about it, please check our video about the ST107. Moving on to temperature monitoring. The supported temperature sensors are all of resistant type, which means you need a single resistance input per sensor. Some of the expansion modules have a dedicated temperature sensor socket. The compatible sensors are as follow. NTC 10K. With this type of sensor you can monitor up to minus 10 degrees Celsius. NTC 5K. With this type of sensor you can read up to minus 20 degrees Celsius. And with NTC 1K you can read up to minus 40 degrees Celsius. I hope it hasn't been too complicated so far. If you have a question, feel free to write it down in the comments and we'll be happy to answer it. Now that we covered the basics, let's move on to our modules. Pico is the user interface of the system. Through it you can configure the settings and see statuses of all devices, the sensors and batteries that you are monitoring. Perhaps the best way to introduce the system expansions is through the concrete use of cases. To monitor a service battery, you will want full battery monitoring, which immediately calls for voltage inputs and current inputs. So in this case, one of our two high amp shunts come into the consideration. Now let's move on to our shunts. Our shunts are the most important modules of our project, as the battery monitoring is the most popular use of our system. The current sensors are all mechanically calibrated to a very high precision. When connecting the current sensor, you can connect to either the positive side or the negative side. Wiring on either positive or negative side is only allowed when the voltage does not exceed 35 volts. If that limit is exceeded, it's mandatory to connect to the negative side. We offer two shunts, the SC303 and the SC503. They both allow current monitoring, they have two voltage inputs, two resistance inputs, and one JST connector for a temperature sensor that is included in the package. We will use our current monitoring 
of the shunt to monitor the current flow in and out of the battery. But because we want full battery monitoring, we also require a voltage input that is also included on the shunt. In order to get a precise reading, it is very important that the only thing connected before a shunt is the battery and everything else is behind it. That will ensure that the current of all devices is taken into account by the shunt. And that is all we need for a complete battery monitoring. To do so for more battery tanks, we repeat the process. If you want to know more information about our shunts and the difference between them, please check our video about the shunts separately. If you want to monitor devices separately, we offer a solution with our STQ modules. They contain four individual con current sensors, which are isolated from one, one another and are designed to bring you the ability to see current of individual devices, consumers or generators. Both of the modules introduce the following to our system. Four current monitoring and one alarm signal relay. The only difference between the two is the maximum continuous current they allow. The STQ25 has a limit of 25 amps per channel and the STQ50 has a limit of 50 amps per channel. If our system voltage does not exceed 35 volts, we can wire to the positive side so that it goes to the devices directly. If our charger or consumer exceeds the limit of one channel, we can wire the channels parallelly and use two channels for one device. Later we have to configure the monitor correctly so that it would understand that this is only a one device. If you want to monitor a high amperage device, such as an inverter, that exceeds the limit of two channels, in our case 100 amps, we offer a solution where you can buy the SC303 shunt and use it exclusively for the inverter. In case you want to know more about our STQ modules, please check out our video on them. If you run out of resistance inputs, voltage inputs, for monitoring tank levels, temperatures, batteries and so on, and would require more, we offer a solution with our ST107 module, which introduces four additional resistance inputs, three voltage inputs and one alarm signal relay. If you want to see the incline of your vehicle, we offer an inclinometer module, which is a very simple plug and play device. Now we have finished with our full system overview, I hope it wasn't too complicated and if you have any additional questions, feel free to write them down in the comments and we will see you next time.